All right, let's go into exercise 3B, which is importing the accounts payable and authorized suppliers data files. Now those data files are the accounts payable 2015 text. So let's start with that one, all right? And how do we do that? Well, this is a um, ASCII del delimited file in a Mark Microsoft Excel worksheet. So we're gonna go back to idea uh, and we will do the import. We'll start with that text file. Now this is not a report. This is a text file that has the limited data, meaning that the data will be separated by some type of character that will this that will determine where each one of the fields or attributes begins and ends. So we'll start with that ready to specify the folder, uh, the actual name of the file. So we'll start with the accounts payable 2015. And well, it automatically chose the limit because it recognized there was some kind of delimiter. I will keep going. You could have chosen fixed, well, that you could have another file that has a fixed length, which would mean that um, the name field would start from zero to space number 20, and then you would start splitting it up. But let's not get confused for now and provide you the explanation how to import uh, based on a delimited file. So according to this, uh, it automatically recognized that it has uh, it have the limitor. So let me go find out if that is in fact the case. And it says that um, that if it's in fact the tab uh, n number two, there are no field names associated with this. So we're gonna have to create our own field names. That's wonderful. All right. But let's keep going. So this is no header rows and there's no header lines as well. So let's keep going. Uh, and this is going to be the first field. So let's find out how we're supposed to provide or make this information. So here is a little table that gives us the field name and the type of field and the attributes. Uh, although this is really more of a, this is really not a, the limited file, but it's okay. We'll just do that. So, so this is going to be called um, higher number, and it's going to be a character field. Uh, and the second one will be called a payee, and it will be from uh, character number 10 to 17. That's interesting, right? Also a character. Uh, the third section will be the invoice. So that is an invoice that we receive from them. So that's still going to be a character. Um, the invoice date is a date field, and it is the fourth field. Let me make sure that I say date. And we have to let the software know how this file is formatted. Now, it is difficult when you don't have, when you have um, one month digit, but this case was easy. So we had two digits for every month and two digits for every day. So that was nice. Uh, next, we look at this amount, and that happens to be the amount of the invoice, or actually not the invoice, the amount of the amount of the invoice. And that's going to be numeric with two decimals. The next field is going to be a check number. And even though it says here numeric, I don't like it at all. Um, because sometimes you use check numbers. Um, sometimes check numbers may have a letter, such as a repeat uh, or some other type of character. But I'm going to leave it as numeric so that I can comply with the assignment and not confuse you. All right, next, pay date. Pay date is a date that is going to follow the same format. Um, hmm, what is this? It looks like we may have an empty field. Let me make sure that that is the case. See, number six is an empty field, so let's not import that. Let me go back to this that I thought was the check. I'm going to call it field six, and I'm going to say do not import this field. Apparently, it is empty. This is going to be the check number, and the check number is going to be just check, right? And once again, that's going to be numeric, zero for files. And then this is going to be the check date or the pay date, pay date. And that is not a numeric field. It is a date field that has the format of year, year, year. 
month, month, happy day. That's wonderful. And then finally, this is the authorization from the authorizer. So that is an authorization field. Authorizer, and that is a character field. And we're gonna press next, um, next. And you can add one or more fields to be uh, to the imported files by entering the field name, type length. So if we wanted to create anything else other than that, such as a calculated field, it gives you the ability to do so at the very end. Uh, but for now, I am just gonna go ahead and click next. Uh, what else? All right, so next I'm just gonna uh, skip this and you can enter the equation to limit data that is important. This is just uh, you know to allow you to do uh, any type of criteria for if you were trying to only import uh, those that are unpaid or anything else like that, you could create that, um, that type of criteria at this point. So I am gonna go ahead and, and import that um, and I am gonna import it and make sure that I import the database. Um, and the database name have to be very careful because I got to make sure that I use the same name so that I am not giving you that means accounts payable. Okay, so that's going to be accounts payable. And that information, right, it's going to be saved in uh, our RDF file. This record definition is important because sometimes you may want to be you may want to import this over and over with different types of clients as long as they have the same type of um, accounts payable system, right? I don't know if it wants me to do the statistics. Uh, I should. I want to import it. Make sure that you click this to import, create, run, create, generate statistics. I do not want to create a number field at this point. Um, all right, so I'm going to finish this and see if it worked, and it did work. Um, and that's it, so I would print that. Um, one of the things that that we did is we actually pressed the import instead of, instead of uh, linking stuff. And when we do import, it actually brings the data inside. So let's continue with the Excel file, which is gonna be the same thing. We're gonna import from the desktop, grab the Excel file called Supplier Excel, and we are gonna call this authorized supplier and this is going to have a uh, supplier name address and supplier number um a new database we call authorized supplier address right okay perfect so let's do that I hope it doesn't give us an error based on the type of first row is has field names, supplier number, supplier number, address, address one, uh, total previous. Uh, we could make sure that this is defined, but it won't let us as of right now. The output file name box is authorized supplier. And then this is going to be the authorized supplier address. Perfect. And I could rename that if necessary. So I think we're going to just keep it like that. And then that is it for 3B. Perfect. Thank you.